Okay. Uh, hello friends. Uh, today we are going to talk about plane table survey. So this is what a plane table surveying kit looks like. I will explain it in the later slides that what does it contain of. So objectives of the plane table surveying. We will we'll discuss about these things. Uh, we will first describe about the plane table and the accessories that is the uh, kits that is required for the plane table surveying. Uh, how to adjust the plane table. Uh, the different methods to locate the points with the plane table. And uh, the two point problem uh, and how to solve it. The three point problem how to solve it. And uh, explain the errors and precautions to be taken and advantages and disadvantages of plane table surveying. So, this is, these are the things that uh, require for plane table surveying. First is a plane table and the tripod. So, the tripod is attached to the plane table. Uh, it makes the plane table uh, stand and uh, we get a plane alleyed which which is used to uh, sight the stations. Um, it contains an object vein, a thin thread and an eye vein. And uh, there are different type of alidates uh, I will talk about in the later slides. The spirit level which is used for the leveling. A magnetic compass which uh, orients the plane table to the magnetic knot. And a plumbing fork which is used to transfer the point, uh, point from the sheet to the ground or the vice versa. So, this is a plane table. Well, uh, the dimensions are uh, of, plane, of plane table are 450 to 70 SM 50 mm uh, and uh, it is made of a well seasoned wood. Uh, it has a ball and socket arrangement to, uh, to the level and can be screwed onto a tri tripod like I said before it is attached to the tripod and a drawing sheet can be fixed with a pin on ta or tape A2 or A1 sheet preferably uh, when we come to the alley uh, there are uh, actually there are uh, two types uh, one is a plain alley uh, which we are using in our uh, lab also uh, it, it is uh, it is made with a metallic rule and uh, uh, and, uh, and two edges uh, from which one we can side uh, from one we can side it and the other uh, has got a little slit and a thread attached to it. The both frames are attached at its ends. Uh, so there is another type of alidate that is a telescopic alidate. Uh, it is an advanced version. Um, <clears throat> we, are, we, are, we are using the metallic uh, alidate, the normal alidate, uh, plain alidate in our lab. Now, the spirit level. Uh, spirit level is required uh, to ensure the leveling uh, of the table on, on the ground surface. And uh, basically, if the, it is not properly labeled, then we won't get the points and we, we, we will get errors. Uh, in our surveying, so um, we uh, we we will get ensured when the uh, table is uh, level. Uh, we will get uh, we will get the indication when the bubble comes in between the markings in the, on a plane table, and then we need a magnetic compass. Uh, <coughs> we will. Or orient the, our uh, table to the north and make it read zero uh, by turning the table and that is the our default direction. Trough compass is basically used here mm -hmm. and then a plumbing fork. Plumbing fork uh, is a folded frame with a hook and a plumb bob at the lower limb uh, which makes up the whole plumbing fork. The upper frame is placed on the on the sheet with it uh, pointed end at the point point marked as station on the sheet. The tripod legs are adjusted to bring the plumb up over the station mark. That is, uh, that that's what I said. Uh, it it is 
useful for transferring the point from the table to the ground or the ground to the table. So the basic uh, thing that we need to know about plane table surveying is uh, how to do it. Uh, the procedure involves first the setting up of the plane table, then setting up over of station, then leveling, centering and orienting. Setting up is we, add, we we just screw the plane table on the top of the tripod and adjust the tripod legs uh, for a comfortable height so that we can uh, do our survey. The plane table is is leveled using the spirit level. Uh, then the centering is done. Uh, uh, this is done using the plumbing fork and uh, and by adjusting the tripod legs. Uh, if the station is not marked, uh, then mark the station point using the plumbing fork on the sheet as well as on the ground. So that is what transferring the point uh, is meant. Um, then we mark the magnetic meridian uh, using the truck compass at a convenient place on the sheet. That is the, we take the magnetic knot. Then after setting the table at new station, the truck compass along the magnetic meridian uh, on the line, we rotate the table to make the compass read zero and lock the table. The table is now oriented in which it was at previous station. This is the change of point basically. So orienting the table, the table is first set up at a point A as we can see here and then uh, and then line AB is drawn uh, on the sheet after citing the uh, ranging rod using the alidate to B. Uh, then the instrument is shifted and set up at B. And uh, keeping the alidate along the line BA which we had drawn, we are just tracing it back, we cite the ranging rod A, our previous station. Now the table is oriented. This is, this is called as back sighting, uh, done by back sighting. There are uh, some methods of plane table, radiation method. Uh, in this method, basically what we do, uh, we, we first uh, choose the area that we need to survey. So we, we put the ranging rods according to, uh, according to the type of uh, area we want to get. So we put one ranging rod and mark it as A then B, then C, then D, then E, then F. We mark all the uh, distances between each, uh, these station, each of these stations. And then we choose a point, uh, a point from where all of these points are visible and from preferably in, into, the, into this uh, closed area. So from here, this is a point P, let's say this point P, station P. From here, we, 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 we set up the plane table here, as I have described earlier how we set it up. And then we cite the various stations that we had marked earlier. Uh, we first, from P, we first cite A. And A, we, we mark the distance from P to A and mark it on the paper and just draw it. And again, from P to B, P to C, P to D, P to E, and P to F. And join all the points to get the uh, this area that we have surveyed on a area representation on the sheet. There is one more method. Uh, it is intersection method. Uh, in this method, uh, basically, what we do, we set a we we choose uh, choose two points like uh, A and B, and from these two points only. We will cite the our station point, which has been already uh, earlier. Uh, uh, earlier, we have decided those points and we have marked them with the ranging rods. And uh, so, from here, uh, we cite first we from A we, we cite point P, then we cite point Q, then we cite point R, then we cite point S using the alidate and uh, draw the lines extending it uh, up to the paper's uh, length and area and then 
we shift our uh, station A to station B. This is our new station, and uh, we we again side back uh, point A and check that whether the, whether the table is oriented or not, uh, as discussed earlier, uh, the orientation of the table, and then again from here from B, we try to cite P, Q, R, and S, and we draw the lines and the points where the uh, lines from when we had uh, cited from point, uh, station A and the uh, lines from the station B where they meet that is the intersection points. We join those intersection points to get the area to be surveyed. There is one more method is it is known as traversing. In traversing we, we are first taking up the table a uh, point uh, we're taking the table uh, table to a point a uh, then from here we cite a diagonal station point c and then uh, the adjacent to it is a point b uh, then we move the table to b and again we cite point a the orientation check and then from there we point c and diagonally we points uh, we cite the point d the station d again we move to c and then uh, from c we uh, we cite point a and uh, check from uh, from our citing at station a to point c whether they are coinciding or not and we'll get the check line and from c we cite point d uh, and we get a closed area kind of a closed area from a to d it is still not uh, cited so for that uh, the last step is we move the our station to point d it is a pretty tedious method but uh, it is also used we can get accurate results from it uh, and then from d to a uh, the there are various. Uh, the, this is these these three were the most common uh, plane tabling methods, and uh, there are two point methods. Uh, two point. There is a problem which uh, uh, in uh, which occurs in plane tables of a two point problem. Uh, actually, what happens is uh, to find the position S. Here is the S. S. Uh, of the table from the station S occupied by the table the ac accurately plotted positions of P and Q of the two stations P and capital P and capital Q visible from the instrument station and by not occupying these two stations actually an error comes into these two and uh, whether the whether actually these uh, stations P and Q are occupying and we are getting a wrong representation on the table uh, as we cite them uh, so a error occurs there so the solution uh, for this is to select an arbitrary station R and set the table on it approximately orient it such that PQ is capital is parallel to the our original PQ point on the field so now citing p and q uh, we obtain the position of r as small r on the on the paper then mark small s as the position of the capital s by citing the signal at s and chaining the distance x now shift the table to s our main uh, our main station and orient the table uh, ba uh, table by a back sighting to r and cite the station p and draw a ray then cite this uh, station at q and draw a ray from s then we set an arranging rod at m uh, at a at a great distance uh, and then keep the alidate along the pq and cite m then we keep dilated against PQ and cite M and rotate the table to cite M. And this is the correct orientation. So that this is how we overcome the two point problem.
so three point problem uh, the problem is basically when there are three visible stations given and the plotted positions to plot the station occupied by the table with the table correctly oriented now methods of solution there are many methods one is tracing paper method other is graphical method and trial error method the tracing paper method giving positions of the points used we trace the uh, points on the paper and extend it to uh, to get a approximate position of the points the the procedure is first pqr are plotted as a plotted positions of uh, the main stations pqr s is the station occupied then we set up the table at s approximately orient the table uh, by judging the peak, uh, whether that pq and the line on the paper is parallel to the field line uh, capital p and q then fix the straight tracing paper on the sheet and mark as s1 by plumbing fork with the alidate centered on the s1 mark s1 p1 s1 q1 and s1 r1 these may may not pass through the points on the paper pqr then take the tracing paper and place it such that the three rays pass through p q and r then fix the sheet in this position and mark s remove the tracing paper and cite the point uh, the point at p and uh, with the alidate on s rotate the table so as that the signal at p is cited check the orientation by back citing q and r so this is the representation that that is so showing in diagrammatically yeah so that's all friends uh, thank you for listening uh, thank you